praise the Lord. I want to welcome all of you to this Watch Night service. As uh, Pastor Roy was telling, um, nothing special happening uh, this day. Every day, as we understand from God's word, is made of the Lord. And every day we rejoice in the presence of God. We rejoice in God. But then why do we come together like this? Um, it is just to look back, thank the Lord, reflect on the goodness of God, and to be thankful to him, to wor offer worship to him, and also to make uh, new resolutions in the presence of God as we are about to enter into a new year. Uh, it is always our prayer that we will um, experience him closely uh, in a closer way in the days to come, especially in the new year. And that is our uh, prayer always, and we know that uh, this has been uh, these past several weeks or months, by God's grace, we were able to uh, come to the church, almost uh, uh, the full, full church, and the Lord really blessed us, helped us uh, in coming together and worshiping and lifting up his name, but uh, uh, with all the scare, uh, you know, and the updates that we are getting uh, from all around. So um, that is why we have these uh, very few people attending, maybe 40, 45 people altogether um, tonight here. But that is wonderful that this many of us could come. And uh, I know that many of our people are attending uh, this meeting online, and they are also wishing that they could be here, and we wish too that they could be here with us tonight so that we could together lift up the wonderful name of Jesus. And some of them expressed uh, their desire to testify, um, you know, online uh, on the Zoom. Uh, as of now, we don't have that technology here, and so we cannot have that. Maybe, God willing, we'll arrange a, a special session, a Zoom session, for testimony of all the people who, were, who are not able to give testimony today. Uh, so we will um, keep it that way. And uh, let us be here, whoever is here and whoever is attending uh, online on the Zoom, please be uh, you know, sitting with a prayerful attitude asking the Lord to speak to us, to minister to us. And I know um, that every one of us has... Uh, um, you know, special thoughts uh, this evening uh, as we are about to enter into, as we are on the threshold of uh, a new year, 2022. We all have special thoughts, right? Uh, and no sensible person can have the same thought as uh, he or she used to have you know, all through the year when we come to the end of the year. Our thoughts go back uh, to so many things, the mighty works of the Lord, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, the, the interventions of God, the ways in which God answered our prayers and the mistakes that we made and maybe asking for forgiveness. So, so our thoughts vary actually, uh, even as we are here or elsewhere, I am sure we are all going through those thoughts uh, tonight. But, um, you know, uh, you know, in spite of everything that has been happening, in spite of all the situations, we, we have been blessed immensely. How many of us will say that we have been blessed? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We have been so immensely blessed in, in so many ways, and I praise God for that. And our people have been kept safe uh, in spite of their sickness, difficult situations, and uh, you know, many uncertainties that our people went through, but the Lord kept us all safe and provided for us. The Lord answered our prayers. The Lord blessed us with babies in our families. And uh, many of our people have been blessed with new houses, job openings, and, you know, young people getting engaged and married. And, and the Lord bringing almost all of us closer to him. That is what we have to really praise God the most for, that in spite of all this, the Lord kept us close to him and helping us to walk in his ways. And so continue in the presence of God prayerfully as we look into the word of God tonight. I would uh, draw your attention to Philippians, the letter to Philippians, Paul's letter to Philippians, chapter, chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Uh, Philippians 3 through 
14. Let me read that for you. Philippians, letter to Philippians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Jesus Christ, by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I want to talk about pressing toward the high calling with which we are called. A very important message, very, very important message for all of us. Um, you know, I hope uh, all those who are attending online also very, very attentively sit and listen to the word of God. You know, looking into the most important topic of uh, pressing toward the high calling for which every one of us is called. You know, the month of January that we are going to enter into is named after uh, the Roman god called Janus. Um, and Janus is usually depicted as a two-faced god. You know, the Roman god Janus is usually depicted as a two-faced god uh, or a, a man with two faces, one face looking back <clears throat> and the other face looking uh, ahead. Uh, so the, the face that looks back would have traces of sorrow, dismay, perplexity, and, you know, all kinds of sorrowful expressions on the face that looks back, whereas the, the one that looks forward to the friend, it would reflect hope and confidence. And, you know, tonight as we are sitting here, even if, as we look back, not that we have two faces, but we should have only one face, but even as we look back and see what had happened in our lives, and if at all there are things that would cause perplexity, that would cause sorrow, difficult feelings, uh, as we look back, I just want to promise all of you, on the basis of the word of God, on the guarantee that is given by the word of God, that we can look forward with hope, we can look forward with so much of expectation because, of, because our Lord lives. The Lord lives in 2021. The Lord will continue to reign in 2022. So we can look forward with hope and confidence. You know, in this uh, context, actually, the words of Apostle Paul have great significance. Um, you know, what do they mean? What do they mean for us and what are we supposed to uh, take from that. The first thing that we need to um, keep in our mind as we are coming to the close of this year, in a few minutes, we are going to enter into the new year uh, here. And uh, uh, the, the most important thing where we can start, you know, uh, is recognizing who we are and where we are. Recognize who and where we are. Are. Who are we and where are we? Apostle Paul says in verse 12, Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect. You know, Apostle Paul says where he is and who he is, where we are and who we are. Paul says, not that I don't say, brothers, sisters, that I have already obtain, obtained. I don't say that I am already perfect. You know, something that we need to find out about ourselves as we are at the end of the year 2021 and are about to enter into the new year. Where are we? Where are we? Paul says, I have not yet obtained, already attained. I am not perfect at. Where are we? Where will we see ourselves as we evaluate ourselves. Do you think, see the need of obtain, uh, evaluating our own life? Every one of us should be evaluating our lives, not only at the end of every year, but even every now and then we should sit and evaluate our lives, see where we are, how we are going, how we are doing in our Christian life. It was 
Greek philosopher Socrates who said, an unexamined life is not worth living. An unexamined life is not worth living. He Vele Ratapadata Jividan Jivikan Avagashamilam. And Vanya Jivikan Kolatadana. If we don't evaluate ourselves, our life is not worth living. We just take things for granted. We just go in the way that we have been living. And you know, as we have come to the close of 2021, look into our own lives and see where we are. You know, let us use this as a time for self examination. So, yeah, Parishothana Kulur Samyamaita Namakidine Ubiyogi a time of self examination. You know, with the knowledge of what we, what really matters for our life, what is actually that which matters? Okay, I got a good job. Is that what we want to live for? Okay, we were able to buy a good house. Is that something that would provide a lasting joy for us? Or my health is much better towards the end of the year. Is that something that we should always be living for? Or do we have better things to live for? Evaluate our lives. Evaluate our lives. You know, Apostle Paul says, I you know, he was living to lay hold of for which he was laid hold of by Christ. He wanted to lay hold of that for which he was laid hold of. Avan endini vendi pidikya petvo, adava kartav avane vilichuo, adini vendi jivikana. Adinda comparison adamal naratana. Adila namal evaluate yendra. Any endinimendi karta vilichuo. How they set theoda certa compare. I need to compare my life with that. Am I there? Where am I? Have I reached, you know, according to that, in that comparison? Right. Where are we tonight? Last year also, maybe you didn't have, uh, you know, the, the in person meeting. Maybe on the Zoom you attended, I hope. And maybe you looked into your life and then you forgot about it and whether you were growing or you were standard in your growth or you just kept the same uh, you know, level or you, you went down, went down. And as you have come to the end of uh, the year, where are we? Where are we? We always need to remember that Christian life is a journey. Christian life should be a process of growth. It should be understood as a journey, as a process of growth. And, and we were all created for growth. Growth and, uh, you know, we were redeemed for growth. We were supposed to be growing every day. But how much have we grown? Where are we tonight? You know, Paul knew that when he said this, brothers, sisters, I'm not saying that I have already obtained it. Brothers, sisters, I'm not saying that I've already become perfect, but I'm still running. I'm still running. You know, Paul knew that he was very much far below the possible glory that God had in store for him, his own life. Right? Right? And I was looking into my own life and I was just sorry in the presence, so sorry in the presence of God, asking the Lord to forgive me because I could in no way come up to the level of God's expectations according to God's word. The places where I made mistakes, places where I failed him, where places where I failed the people, places where I did not walk in the way that I was supposed to be walking, the places where I went it all wrong, I made it all wrong. And so I understood that this is so true, you know, that I fall so far below. How many of us would agree tonight that we fell so far, for, we, we, we all fell so far below. Etto madhigam namala valare endadu bole valaradi, ayi tiri endadu bole, ayi tiraadi, ayi tirne avastha. Let us confess that and uh, understand where we are tonight. You know, as 
you know, Apostle Paul wanted to tell the Christians in Philippi that, uh, you know, don't ever say that with your repentance once and your belief on the Lord Jesus Christ once and your baptism, uh, even if you had baptism, even if you had miracles, you know, miraculous interventions by the Lord, you know, it, it would not make you perfect. Maybe your prayer life has increased. Maybe you had, uh, you know, spent more time with the Bible. Maybe, you know, you had a little bit of improvement here and there, but that doesn't mean that you have become perfect. I'm sure in unison, every one of us would say tonight that we fall far below from the expectation of God. Hallelujah. At the end of 2021, Let's, that's why Apostle Paul confesses and say, says that I know that nothing good dwells within me. That is in my flesh, right? So whatever is lacking in us, as you look into your lives tonight, whatever is lacking in us, um, you know, confess that to the Lord. The selfishness, the sinful tendencies, the evil that is there in us, the wretched life that we are leading, the fear that we still have, the doubts that come and assail us every now and then in our Christian life, confess everything to the Lord and say to the Lord tonight, at the end of this year, Lord, I am coming to your cross I am poor, a weak, and blind. I am counting all but draws. I come to your cross tonight. Let us do that tonight uh, as we come to the end of the year. Second thing, Apostle Paul says, Apostle Paul does, as we read in verse 13, verse 13, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and reaching forward to what lies ahead, which every one of us can do, right? Forgetting the past, leaving the past behind, leaving the past behind. How many of us want to do that? That I want to leave the past behind as I enter into the new year. I heard of a custom that that is uh, uh, that prevails among the Italians that, you know. Um, you know, on the New Year's, uh, you know, 31st night before the New Year, before the clock strikes 12, you know, by, by around 10 o'clock, all the people would go into their houses. They would close their doors and windows and everything. Even policemen won't be, it is reported that they wouldn't be even seen. Uh, many of them won't be seen outside because a terrifying kind of, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a loneliness would be there. But the moment the clock strikes 12, the windows will be open, the doors of the houses will open, and uh, there will be laughter, there will be joy, and the people would come out of their houses and uh, bringing all their broken furniture, all their torn personal items, and bring that all these things out, and they would make a bonfire out of it. They would say that, we don't want to enter into the new year with all these broken things, all these torn things. You know, so that is almost something like that. Apostle Paul is also saying that. Uh, you know, something that I do is forgetting that which is behind. Forgetting. Look at the tense in which it is used. He's not saying that I forgot what that which was in the past. He's not even saying I had forgotten. I have forgotten. But it is told in the present continuous. Present continuous. You know, forgetting that which is behind. Is the present continuous means Tudarmana Maitula Ranipoma. Either Varshatulika Matran Jayanda Dalla if forgetting the past, but forgetting should be a continuous 
experience in our lives, you know. So he was not simply talking about his pre-Christian experience and, you know, uh, but, but every day he does that. That's what we have to understand from Paul. On a daily basis, forgetting what happened in the past. Daily basis. I think something that we all fail uh, in, in uh, 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 an area. And this is an area where we all fail to failing to put leave the past behind, right? Because the past is always with us. Past is haunting us. The, the hurts of the past, the pains of the past, and uh, the heavy-heartedness of the past, the broken relationships of the past, and the, the abuses of the past, and the prejudices of the past, the hatred of the past, and the, the, you know, all, all that which had gone wrong are still haunting us, and we are holding on to them, and we are about to enter into a new year with all those broken pieces of furniture, torn clothes, and all those unwanted things with which we are about to enter into the new year. And I tell you that 2022 also will be the same for you, just as 2021 was, or may become worse than that. Unless you leave the past behind and enter into the new year. Very, very important. You know, a, a true contradiction because the past comes to us and robes us of our freedom. You know, it creates doubt in us. It creates wedge between our brothers and sisters and creates disunity, dissension. Everything is because we are holding on to the past and the hurt feelings and injuries and we are not willing to forget. We are not willing to forgive and go ahead. Hallelujah. Forgetting the past behind. A healing can come only by a deeper, deeper experience of Christ. Where we promise him, Lord, I choose to forgive. I choose to forget. I choose to leave behind the things of the past. I don't know how many of you will say that tonight. If you want to be free, if you want to be blessed as you enter into the new year, enter into that deeper relationship with the Lord and promise him, Lord, I choose to forgive. I choose to forget. I choose to leave the past behind. Paul says, forgetting the past. Forgetting the past. He knew what he was and where he was. And he also did forget or he kept forgetting, forgetting. Yesterday also somebody insulted me. Yesterday also someone hurt me. Yesterday also someone caused me pain. Even today someone must have done. I'm not talking about myself. I'm not talking about anyone, but about everyone. Maybe someone must have done, but we choose, we choose being spiritual people, being the children of God. We choose to forget. We choose to forgive and you will see the blessings of God. And you are saying, Lord, I choose to forgive. Hallelujah. The third thing I have to quickly conclude. Third thing as we read in verse 14. <laughs> he says that I do not consider us becoming perfect. One thing I do, forgetting the past. Then what I do in verse 14. I press on toward the God. God. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, only few of us are here tonight, but I'm sure several are hearing online. So I want to tell all of you, have a wonderful goal for the year. A goal for the year 2022. Don't simply enter into it casually, formally, as you must have done earlier on several occasions. But enter into the new year with a defined goal. A defined goal. And what was Paul's goal? I reach forward, I press toward the goal. What is your goal for 2022? 
your goal is to reduce your weight further, to do more workouts, to eat less or eat more, or to save some more money, to strengthen your bank account, to buy a new house, a new vehicle. What is your goal? Some of these are good goals, right? But look at the goal that Paul had. What was his goal? We read from in, in verses 10 and 11. What was his goal? Life goal. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. I wish I could preach about it for a long time, but we don't have time. I have to cut short and conclude very quickly. What, was, what were Paul's goals? He says that very succinctly, very, very clearly. He says that, first of all, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. More than anything else, How many of us will say that this is my declared goal? For 2022, you know, I want to experience the power of his resurrection. He's talking about now, now, not in the future. That is a different thing. That's not what he's saying here. In my everyday life, how I want to live? I want to live a life experiencing the power of the resurrection of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let that be our goal. Let that be our goal. Experiencing the power of his resurrection on a daily basis. How many of us will pray for that? Your life will be different. I want to promise you that your life will be different. You will, you will refuse to be ordinary. You will refuse to be the usual person that you have been, but you will be very, very different. You will on a daily basis experience the power of his resurrection. Secondly, Apostle Paul says, I want to also experience the fellowship of his sufferings. The first part, we maybe we are ready, right? Power and the elder Christian. Suffering are governed. Paul is combining these two. I want to experience the power of his resurrection on the other side. Also want to fellowship with his sufferings. Hello? How many of you are hearing, hearing me tonight? Avanda kastani bhavangalda kutaima. Any kivenam? Hallelujah. Very hard truth. Right? But it is an essential truth. An essential truth. You know, we will not know Christ until we know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. Are you hearing me? That is why the fellowship within his sufferings is very, very important. So who knows what you will be called for in 2022? The fellowship of the suffering of Christ becoming a part of that. I know. It will be difficult to say amen, right? Kudal Kastangalo. It was only the name of the Matran Kastan. It was only Kastangal Kudam Pogan. But if that is something that would help us to know Christ better, know Him better, commit ourselves for that. Lord, if that is something that would take me closer to you, I'm here. I'm ready for that. Tell the Lord. The Bible says, as Apostle Paul writes in the letter to Timothy, he says, if you died with him, you will also live with him. 
If you suffer with him, you will reign with him. Right? He is a good man. 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 Everyone wants to reign, right? Kartave Varimbam, he poke on deed a lay in the mayor. Engle any arcane in the arca agrilla. Rain jay and eller Christoa. Varikan, Vada and eller Christoa is to la tendoa. Sahikin noven? Good principle of the word of God. I will not a good a marital, good a jivikim. Sahichal, good of you. Are you here? Hallelujah. Fellowship of suffering has special meaning in preparing us. Maybe some of us still need to go through. Maybe most of us, many of us still need to go through that experiences of the fellowshipping in the suffering of Christ in 2022. It would prepare us in a special way. It would make us sensitive to the suffering of others. Only when we suffer, we will know how others are suffering. Because we are not suffering many a times, we are not sensitive to the sufferings of others. So God allows us to go through our suffering. There was a time when I was really crying. Crying and crying and crying. And I have been praying, but there was no answer. Then the Lord told me, through a servant of his, un, you know, unexpectedly in a surprise kind of visit by a prophet, you know, coming and laying his hand on me, on my head. In a meeting when I, where I was attending, he said, son, I see the tears that you are flowing in my, shedding in my presence. Don't ever think that they go unnoticed. You know why I allow you to cry? I'm preparing you to better understand the suffering of many, many people who will be around you in the future. That gave me a new insight. Yenavas, the fellowship of his sufferings. It prepares in a very, us in a very special way. It makes us sensitive to the suffering of others. It, uh, it deepens our love for others, for God. The deeper we suffer, the deeper we love. Love others, love Christ. The more we suffer, the more we will be prepared. Take it prophetically from your pastor for 2022. The deeper you suffer, the better you will be prepared for God's work. Apostle Paul says, third goal, I want to be conformed to his death. Avende maranate, le. Avende maranathoda anuruba petita. You know, this is not one time that I'm willing to die, maybe after this many years when the Lord calls me home. No. This is talking about a daily experience, daily dying, daily dying, mortifying ourselves, our old self died and our self is hid in Christ. And this has to be repeated again and again. That's not enough. Today I have to do that. You know, Somewhere we, we fail as Christians. We should always have a, a point of surrender. Years back when I accepted Christ, I had that point of surrender. But I should also have a process of surrender on a daily basis. process process you know, afflicting myself, you know, killing myself. Not that, you know, we take our life or we inflict pain on our body. That's not what is, uh, what Paul, he, he says that, you know, I refuse to take 
into consideration the the indulgence or the desires of the flesh jadathinte ishtathangalkku enne thanne keedakade adine virodhamayittu ninniyan dannipichu adimiyakunnu nanu parayunnathu being conformed to the death of christ or in other words becoming a new man every day in the new year every one of us is expected to become a new man every every day every day finally paul's goal was also resurrection from the dead resurrection from the dead right ingena vallavithaneyum marichavaril nulla punaruthanam prabhikena if that happens in 2022 we die or if the lord comes back marichavaril nulla punaruthanam prabhikanam praise the lord there is no guarantee how long we will live there is no guarantee that all of us will come back for uh, this watch night service in to- at the end of 2022 no guarantee our life is so uncertain right idu alpa nerathekku kandittu maanju poguna maranju poguna aavi pole yakobinte leganathil nammal vaichallo ee divasangalalla there is no guarantee but there is only one desire if i die if i die next year or before this year starts one desire i want to attain that resurrection from the dead baaki ella secondary ya adi thaanna ishtangala adin kuranja karyangala those are all less important least important the most important thing is i want to attain the resurrection from the dead kartavu dan gambira nadathodum pradhana doodande shabdathodum daivathinte kaalathodum kude swargathil nirangu varigen christuvil marichavar munbe ഇവിടെ കയറി വരുവീൻ എന്ന ദൈവശബ്ദം കേൾക്കുമ്പോൾ മരിച്ചവർ അക്ഷയരായി ഉയർത്തു വരുമ്പോൾ ഐ വാണ്ട് ടു ബി വൺ അമണ്ട മോസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഗോൾ റൈറ്റ് മോസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഗോൾ ഹാല ലൂയ ലെറ്റസ് ഹാവ് ദോ ഹോൾഡ് ഓൺ ടു ദോസ് ഗോൾസ് ടു നൈറ്റ് ആസ് വി കൺക്ലൂഡ് ആസ് ഐ കൺക്ലൂഡ് മൈ വേർഡ്സ് ഇയർ ഫൈനൽ വൺ ഇൻ ടു മിനിറ്റ്സ് ഐ ടെൽ ആൻഡ് കൺക്ലൂഡ് concentrate on the path concentrate on the path apostle paul says i press forward for the prize of the upward call i press forward but my eyes are always on what the prize not that i somehow um going ahead but he is saying that i am going ahead with my eyes on the prize that is waiting for me enikku vendi vechirikkunna aa prathifala adin mel drishti vechu kondu njan munnodu povu angum ingum nokkiyal nee munnil poyida bhangamilla dodiyal kiridam o angum ingum nokkiyal nee ഭംഗമില്ല തോടിയാൽ കിരീടം ആംഭാരം പാവം തള്ളി ലക്ഷ്യം നോക്കി നേരെ മുന്നോട്ടോടി ഓട്ടം തികയ്ക്കാം ഭാരം hallelujah let the year 2022 be as a time a year when we don't get distracted by so many things our attention is not diverted right nammade attention shraddha mari pogade aa price nokikonde namukku vendi vechirikkunna aa aa valiyeriya prathifalam mathram lakshyamaakki munnotu poguvan apostolne paulusine pole devam namme sahayikkendadinu namukku indra raatri kartavinode പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കാം ദൈവത്തിന് സ്തോത്രം 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 ഹലേലുയ ഹലലുയ ഷുഡ് നോട്ട് അലൗ എനി തിങ് ടു സ്ലോ അസ് ഡൗൺ നമ്മെ നമ്മുടെ ഓട്ടത്തിൽ നിന്ന് ശ്രദ്ധ തിരിച്ചു കളയുവാൻ മാറ്റിക്കളയുവാൻ ഒന്നിനെയും അനുവദിക്കാതെ 
Can the Mukumu not to move any day again to the Namukel? Let us all close our eyes and bow our heads in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Every one of us be praying. Hallelujah. As we just heard tonight, first of all, let us recognize who we are and where we are. Hallelujah. Let us confess to the Lord. Lord, I have not become what I am supposed to be. Even at the end of 2021, I have not become. Sorry, Lord. I am so sorry, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to simply make claims and boast about my Christian raise my life, but I just confess my failures. The second thing Paul said, I leave the past behind. I do not want to hold on to the past, the hurt feelings or failures or even successes. I don't want to hold on to them. I want to just leave them behind and uh, I want to go ahead in my race. Hallelujah. Let us commit ourselves for that. Have a goal before us. What do we want to Achieve to know him and the power of his resurrection on a daily basis. Etra blessed I to live the valley. Avendia, Avend Punirutan and the Shakti and Povich. Hallelujah. Namukedre, we are in the Tiramalagal and Nokikunda. Yes, you win the Punirutan and the Shakti and Povich. Namad Rogangal and Nokikunda, Avend Punirutan and the Shakti Alla. Ava Kedira and Nindunda. Namukedira, you are in the Sagala Russian day, Matiatil. Yes, you win the Punirutan and the Shakti and Povich. I'm in the fellowship of his suffering. Hallelujah. And somehow, somehow to attain the, the resurrection from the dead. Let us give ourselves into the law, into the hands of Father. We thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. I pray that you will prepare us for such a life. Just as Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 to 14. That we will live for such a, live such a life. Examining our own life, everyday basis, experiencing your power, leaving the past behind, oh Lord, hallelujah, and aiming at the goals that we have before us and forgetting everything else and not being distracted by anything else, but just concentrating on the path. We'll be able to run and leave in 2022. Help us for that. Thank you for answering the prayers. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Trust you. Committing the church family into your hands. Praying for every one of them. Thank you for taking care of us, keeping us safe in the past. Pray, O Lord, that you will continue to be with us. Keep us all safe. Especially pray for our sick and suffering ones, the elderly people.